It's been a while since I've reviewed a camera monitor because they've all started to get very similar. However, every once in a while, something will come across my desk that is different from anything that I've seen in the past. Here it is, the Feel World LUT5 5.5 inch monitor. And right off the bat, there are a few things that make this monitor different than other ones that I've used. The first one being that it is ultra bright. They boast a 3000 nit brightness, which when compared to some of the other monitors that I own and have used in the past, that's three times brighter. Now I'm gonna be mounting this on top of my Canon M50 with a small rig top handle and a small rig monitor mount. They do include in the box a little monitor mount that you can use if you don't already own one. And it's just a simple one that goes onto a cold shoe and then screws into the quarter 20 that is on the bottom of the monitor. But I prefer to use something other than cold shoe mounts because for me, if you put a lot of weight on your cold shoe, a lot of times, no matter how much you tighten this down, it'll still slide off the top of the camera. Now let's get this side by side with a very popular monitor, which is the Atomos Ninja V or Ninja 5. As some people like to comment <laughs> to me over and over, although I keep saying Ninja V forever and ever. It's also the same brightness as the Atomos Shinobi. So if you've ever used either one of those, they're 1000 nit brightness, where this claims 3000 nit brightness. So it should be three times as bright. All right, so here's the Feel World at 100% brightness and the Atomos at 100% brightness as well. Now, it's hard to tell the difference in brightness because this camera is filming them and it's pretty much just kind of blowing them both out. But from my perspective and to my eyes, I can absolutely tell a difference between the brightness of this display and this display. This one, when it comes to shadows, they are definitely much brighter and they're not getting as dark and crushed. Now these two monitors have a lot of similarities and some differences, but one thing they do share in common is they both have some fan noise. So on the Atomos Ninja V, a lot of people report that they hear the fan, but I've never had an issue with it ever coming up in any of my recordings with the microphone being, you know, four or five feet away doing something like this, an interview or a talking head. I've never had the fan on this picked up ever. This fan on the Feel World LUT5 is definitely a little bit louder. However, you can control the speed of the fan, whereas on the Atomos Ninja V, you can't turn it off, you can't control the speed. So I'm gonna pull up the settings menu, double tap, click on the little gear icon, and then the fan speed right now is at 100%. And I can easily turn this down. And here, even at 50%, it's much quieter but let's bring it all the way down. There we go. Now I have it set at 0%. So obviously it's completely silent. It's turned off. So the boom mic is right here. I'm touching it. It's just barely out of frame. And the fan is actually right here. So about a foot away pointing right at it. So let's listen in, see if we can hear it. Now I'm gonna bring the fan all the way close up to the microphone so you can really hear. Now, typically your monitor would not be this close to a microphone. It's gonna be more of like, you know, five, six feet away from wherever your subject is. And honestly, there's really no way this is gonna get picked up. So the fan noise is not a big concern to me, especially because you have the ability to turn it down or turn it off completely. Now, when you have the fan turned off, this monitor does get pretty hot. So that's something to be aware of if you don't want this to overheat, especially if you're out shooting on a hot day. This monitor has an auto brightness mode, just like you have on your phone. So if you go out in the bright sunlight, you know, your screen gets brighter or dimmer if you're in a dark studio. When you have that setting turned on, the fan speed is controlled automatically as well. You can't turn it off. Now let's take a look at the feature that makes this monitor stand apart from anything else that I've ever used, and that's actually this mount on the back. And this is a Sony NPF mount that actually supplies power to your accessories. So something like a wireless transmitter, a light, maybe a microphone that uses this type of mount. I'm just gonna slide this right into place and I'm using the Hollyland Cosmo 600. Now this was the transmitter that worked the best with this mount. You could of course use whatever one you have. Now another popular one that I grabbed to try is the Mars 400S Pro, also from Hollyland. Now it does use a Sony NPF battery, but for whatever reason, the mount on this just really doesn't line up well with this 
for some reason it just won't stick in place. It's actually not fully making contact with the little battery receptacles here, the pins. It'd be best to find a review of someone else using your same transmitter on this monitor to see if it works. Otherwise, you could reach out to Feel World to see if your transmitter will mount on the back. Feel World recommends that you use the Sony 970 battery, which is the largest NPF battery that you can buy from Sony. You can see how much it sticks out here. And that's for two reasons. One is because the brightness of this screen being at 3000 nits, it uses a lot of power. So they're just saying, hey, if you wanna get a good amount of runtime, which is about two and a half hours of runtime on this battery, you need to use the larger one. Another reason I found is that you have to use the larger one to be able to actually properly power your wireless transmitter. So you can see that I've got it powered up here. That's in contrast to if I use a different battery. So let me just show you. If I use a smaller one like the 750 Sony NPF battery, the monitor will still power on. However, the transmitter itself will actually kind of flash on and off. You can see that here, see how it keeps going black, on, off, on, off. And I believe that's just because there's probably not enough actual output coming out of this battery to supply both the monitor and the transmitter properly. And that's unfortunate. The same thing happens when using the smaller Sony 570 batteries as well. Now, something you wanna be aware of also with this mount is the fact that you can actually change the position of it. So just grab a little Phillips head screwdriver and there's actually a screw in here which you can loosen up and you can move this mount around within these little crosshairs. So you can move it over this way move it up or down if you need to. Now what I recommend is that you get the mount the furthest away from the battery possible. So I have mine slid all the way over. And that's because for me, my transmitter has the HDMI input and SDI input and outputs here on this side that faces the battery. And when it was too close to the battery, I actually couldn't even plug in the HDMI cable because it was hitting against the battery. But once you have this mount moved all the way over to the other side, it completely clears it and it's not an issue at all. Now, there are just so many reasons that something like this is really cool and unique. The fact that you can take your transmitter and just throw it directly Directly onto the back of your monitor, have it powered and not require any other little mounts or anything like that is amazing. Now on the side of the monitor here, you do have full size HDMI inputs and outputs. It could easily become a very mobile director's monitor, completely ran off of a battery, or it's something that a focus puller could use. Another interesting use case for this setup is using the monitor and wireless transmitter on a gimbal because there are so many times that I'm filming a live event running around with a gimbal and then I have to transmit my signal back to the main video switch board. And it's always difficult to find a place to mount the transmitter and a monitor on the gimbal. But with this setup, it becomes one compact piece. I'm gonna grab my gimbal here, which is just the Zion Crane 2S. I do have this little small rig mount that I use for my monitor all the time. And unfortunately, I do have to do it upside down because there is no quarter 20 thread on the top of the monitor. There we go. If I put this arm on the right side of the gimbal, it is a little bit better. The antennas aren't hitting into me as much because they're more off to the side. And I do see how this could definitely work. I think it's a little bit goofy having the transmitter upside down. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any other way to mount this unless maybe you could find a cage. Now, an issue that I have noticed is that when I'm using the monitor and the wireless transmitter together, this battery obviously starts to drain. And when it gets closer to the dead side of the battery, this transmitter actually starts to blink on and off like you saw happening with some of these smaller batteries, which I can tell just means that again, the transmitter isn't getting enough power to stay on. It actually starts going kind of intermittent. That is unfortunate. Um, it basically means that you've got to swap out your batteries a little bit sooner. When it comes to overall build quality, I do think that this monitor is pretty solidly built. It is completely made of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. The monitor is pretty simple. There's not a lot of buttons on it. You do have an on off button here and also the ability to turn the touchscreen on or off. You have a simple scroll wheel on the top that allows you to, of course, run through the menu settings and then click to select different things. On the side, you have that one quarter 20 thread. On the bottom, you do have another quarter 20 thread, and then you have a DC in 12 volt, so you could power this off of something besides a battery. You have a DC out eight volt, 
which is nice to have. It is a simple barrel connection. So if you actually wanted to power your camera completely off of this, eight volt is typically the power that is used on smaller cameras like DSLRs. You of course need to look up how much power your camera takes so you don't accidentally fry it or give it too little power. And you do have an SD slot here on the bottom so you can load in your own custom LUTs, which is really nice to have, especially if you shoot in a flat picture profile like S-Log2 or S-Log3, you can load in your LUTs and actually see what your image is gonna look like. Of course, there are a ton of software features built into the monitor itself, and I'm not gonna go over all them in detail, especially because you probably probably already know what a lot of these tools do. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview. So the first thing is that they actually have a shortcuts menu that if you swipe up from the bottom comes up. And that's really nice to have to get to the things that you use frequently. So you can actually go through and customize each of these six shortcuts on the bottom and make them whatever you want. Now to get into the full menu, you can actually double tap on the screen and then you can hit on this little gear icon and you can go through and change all different things like your brightness, auto brightness, the volume, there's actually speakers built into this if you want to hear playback. And then inside of your RGB menu, you can turn HDR on and off, LUTs, import your LUTs. You can change the color temperature of the monitor itself. You can go in and change your different guides. So you can of course have standard 16 by nine, four by three, you're going for an old school look. You can do one by one if you're doing something square for Instagram or social media, nine by 16 so you can frame up something completely vertical. And of course you have your standard two, three, five widescreen. And then this top menu item is where you have all your different tools built in. So things like vector, parade, histogram, focus assist, your zebras. It's also really easy to check your focus with this monitor because you can do a simple pinch to zoom in and out. Now there are some other shortcuts built into the touchscreen that you may find useful, but I actually found to be a little bit annoying because I accidentally kept on doing them. If you scroll up and down on the touchscreen just on the right side, you get volume control. And for me, I typically don't use the built-in speakers on monitors, I use headphones. So I don't actually wanna turn that on by accident. Now, if you scroll up and down on the left side, that changes the brightness of the display itself, which I do think is kind of nice to have because it's just really quick to quickly brighten it up or bring it down. If you use these small rig monitor mounts like I do, you know that it takes a good amount of pressure to actually move the monitor itself. And that's intentional so that the monitor stays where you want and doesn't flop around and move on you. I usually tighten these little bolts in the back pretty well so that the monitor doesn't move. That because it takes a good amount of pressure to move this monitor, that the actual monitor itself, when you're just pulling on it, it does have a little bit of give or play between the mount itself and the monitor. And what I've actually noticed is that the body or housing of the monitor itself kind of opens up a tiny bit. I do think that's something that they could reinforce or improve a little bit so it's a little bit more sturdy on the bottom quarter 20 mount area. I've already mentioned any of the issues or quirks that I've had with this monitor. And besides those, I do think this is a good monitor if you're in the market for a new one. So definitely check out the link in the description below. And at the time of filming, this monitor is going on Amazon for about $279 US. Feel World did send this monitor out to me for a review, but they didn't pay me to say any of this or see this video before releasing it. So these are all the opinions of my own. All right, guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now, and I'll see you in the next video.